God is such a good God. He's truly worthy to be praised. I, I you know, I, I've been looking at Bible verses. And, and I'm always in the Word of God, but just how rich they are and how the Word of God, you know, when we have Bible verses on the inside, it just does something great and some, something real rich for us. And this being February, nationally, it is the love month, uh huh, the heart month. It's a time that, you know, that you begin to really, really embrace what the Word of God says. If you start doing it, you'll see just how much he loves us, just how much he cares, and just how much it'll begin to shed abroad in your heart and make a difference in the quality of your life with your attitude, with the words that come out of your mouth, how you treat others. It'll just make a difference in your life when you begin to use the word of God and you'll find such wholeness and joy and peace that comes along with the word of God. And it's just a blessing. It brings a blessing. It is a blessing and it delivers blessings unto us. You know, I'm so thankful for what the Lord is doing. I'm so glad for how he is doing it. Uh, in his word, glory to God, hallelujah, and uh, how the clarity of his word just brings us into that place of conviction, uh, especially with coming off this consecration. Uh, yes, you know, the beginning of the year, a lot of people, a lot of people are, are fasting, but again, I want to say a fast without prayer and the word of God is just a diet, okay? But when you will add prayer and you'll add the word of God to your fasting. That's when it begins to be a trumpet that's being blown in your land and sounded out aloud of what God is getting ready to do and bring to pass. <laughs> so tonight, I want to talk about 10, just 10 Bible verses that you need to know about love. Yes, because, you know, at our church, oh, we haven't stopped doing what we do. And this is Love Month at our church. And so the chairpersons, Elder Karen Griffin and Elder Barbara Lyons, you know, they've uh, been working very diligently in uh, 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 just bringing, bringing, to that, bringing that to us that God is speaking. And you know what? It's all about the word. It's all about the word. It's all about your actions and attitude. Yeah. And so I want to share these Bible verses with you because they will make a difference in your attitude. They'll make a difference in how you move forward. Glory to God. And they may even sway the perspective of many of you. Glory to God. And, and begin to get on the path that God would have you to be on. Mm-hmm. And God began to move in your life, and I love it. And you know, God's scriptures will also shed love, God, because it's God's love that will sustain you. And as you read the scriptures, you'll find them upholding you and sustaining you during um, the most difficult trials. There's so much going on on today. Not only is there COVID, but there's disaster in the land. There are things happening in your household. There are things happening in your family. Oh, Oh, yes. A headline news for your family that's taking place. So much loss in this time. And then there can even be those times that you don't even feel safe around those that you should feel safe around. You know, so much is going on and people, you know, you go to work and those people, their perspective have been swayed because you've decided to walk closer with the Lord. So many things are taking place that you're seeing on your job that you can see how the enemy has really just run havoc, not only in adults, but children's lives as well. Just destruction in the land. And you know what? It hurts. It hurts because you care. Uh, but the word of God will come and sustain you in those times and in those hours. I always turn to the word. Oh, I tell you, when I feel like I can't go any further, I know what the word of God will do. And some of you out there may feel like you can't go any further, that you've gone as far as you can go. But oh, let me tell you, you get that word of God out. And I'm going to give you 10 verses on tonight that's going to bless you that you need to know about the love of God. I found that when you find out about how vast and how immeasurable God's love is, glory to God, and how immense and unchanging the love of God is, when you get to that place and you see that, I'm telling you right now, you're going to find that you're going to have a richer understanding 
about the love of God, hallelujah, about God's power and his, his great gift, his immense gift that God has given us of love. When you can really begin to grasp God's love, it changes your life. It changes it completely. Oh, yes. Some people may say, you know what? God's got you spoiled. But don't worry about that. That's stated because what? You have grasped how much God really loves you. How vast, how immense it is. And when you get an understanding of it, it'll change your life. So let's get into it. I want to talk about 10 verses. Number one is that God's love sets the standard. Mm, how about that? God's love sets the standard. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 um, through 7, love is patient, love is kind. You all know that, that chapter. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. Oh, 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 my, my, my. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Ooh, is that not setting a standard right there? My God. Ooh, when you allow that to be your standard, Oh, it'll sustain you through everything when you understand. Oh, yes, the love of God. All right. You know, um, mm, I found that many times you've been burned by people, especially by those that you that have claimed to have loved you. And you get burned. Let's just say that. And that's why it can be so difficult for you to understand what it means to be loved. But if you're there to understand that. That God's love, in those times that you've been burned by people who say that they love you. Glory to God. Thankfully, God has given us the definition of love. Oh, yes. And as you begin to read the verses in 1 Corinthians, that entire chapter 13, it'll just open up to you of how God's promises through his word shares with us the trueness and the pureness of of the love of God. Oh my God. Hallelujah. And it's the kind that restores. It's the kind that heals and inspires you to treat those around you differently. And when you realize that, then you know what? You won't give evil for evil. No, 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 no. You're going to, you're going to turn around. And I tell you, you're going to smile when somebody doesn't smile. You're going to speak if they don't speak. You're going to move forward. Why? Because you got a standard that's been set. You got that standard that's set. And you're not going to let anything remove the vast, the immense, the greatness uh -huh, of God sustaining you. Oh, yes, that's your stability. You're not going to let anything come and steal that. Because that, that's the standard that you have set in your life. Love sets a standard. Glory to God. And you'll know that God himself is love. Oh, glory to God. 1 John 4 and 8. And it truly is a love that is not of this world. Now, let's go to number two. All right. God demonstrates unconditional true love through Jesus' sacrifice. All right. Romans 5 and 8. It says, but God showed his great love for us. By sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Oh, my, my, my. Isn't that good? While we were yet sinners, God sent Jesus Christ to die for us. What love? Ah, whoo, glory to God. Hallelujah. God demonstrates. Love demonstrates. God demonstrated his love for us through the sacrifice of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you're ever wondering if God loves you, Ooh, it is very hard to top God's simple yet profound statement in Romans 5 and 8 about love. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Ooh, we were the enemy of God. Yes, we were the enemies of God. And yet 
Oh, my God, my God. He was willing to give his most prized possession Ooh, so that you and I may have life. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Mm. God demonstrated unconditional love through Jesus and the sacrifice that he gave for us while we were yet sinners. That says a whole lot right there. Glory to God. So it is obvious from this verse on love that God's love is not only unconditional, but it's also sacrificial. Well, let me tell you, that's a beautiful thought. And it's something that you have to process into. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There may be times, as um, David said in Psalm 70, the very last verse there, if you look at it in the Message Bible, David said, I lost it. In the beginning of it, he was saying, it's about five or six verses there. And he was saying, hurry up, God, hurry up. Come on, God, I'm slipping. Come on, come on, come on. And it meant that he was he was, he was, was losing it with the anger, with being upset and, 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 and people lying and things not being done right. He was losing it. But he said, come on, God, hurry up. Oh, oh, hurry up. And then that last verse, he said, I've lost it. <laughs> but God had mercy. Oh, yes, he followed him with that. Let me tell you, it's a beautiful thought. You have to process into it. There are times your humanness, because those that you thought loved you are those that had expressed love, and they they all of a sudden it's, it's turned. It, sometimes you may lose it. But I'm here to tell you right now, it is because of the unconditional, sacrificial love of God that he's shown unto us that as you allow God to minister to your soul, your humanness, then God will begin to pick you up and lift you up and put you in a place that you'll be able to say unconditionally and sacrificially, I'm going to love while they're yet in their attitude, while they're yet in a place of not understanding the vast and the immense love of God. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. That's something right there, isn't it? All right, let me move on because each one of these each one is a message. Number three, God's love is mirrored in nature. Yeah, uh, Psalms 36, 5 through 10. It says, your unfailing love, O Lord, is as vast as the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Isn't this good? Your justice is... Let, just like the ocean's depths. Mm. You care for people and animals alike, O oh Lord. Oh, how precious is your unfailing love. Oh, God. <laughs> All humanity finds shelter in the shadow of your wings. You feed them from the abundance of your own house. Woo! Letting them drink from your river of delights. Mm. For you are the fountain of life, the light by which we see. Oh, whoo, glory to God. Hallelujah. You know what? Just the simple glory of the morning sunrise. Oh, come on now. Glory to God. And if you ever, I love to whenever I have the time to drive, uh, to take to take a drive from one state down through several states to get to ultimately to a state. <laughs> I love to. And it's because I begin to look and I see along the mountain sides. It, it, it's just glorious and it's awesome just to see the trees just perfectly arch way up there. Now, did nobody, did nobody landscape that and the floral colors that are out there. Just God's magic. That's what my children uh, used to say when they were little. Called it God's magic. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you know, it lets us know also just how God can move in your life and he can soothe things in your life. I don't know if you ever go around water, how soothing it is around the water. You go around the ocean. Oh, it's just so soothing there and around the ocean. I've been around the Atlantic right there on it. Glory to God. Same thing with the Pacific. It's just awesome when you begin to get around the water. It's such a soothing, peaceful 
place to be. Glory to God. And it's in these places that you see and you look, that's God's unfailing love. That God did that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. His beloved, you and I, God did it, gave it to us to enjoy. Oh, God's love is mirrored in nature that you look all around you. Sometimes just take a walk. Just take a walk and see God's love all around. Just see what God has done. Okay, come on. Just look in your house and see what the Lord has done. God has done great things in this world that is filled with so much fear. In this world, you know, so much anxiety. In this world that you look around and you see, you know what? It's just incredible how much God surrounds us. Oh, come on with me now. Glory to God. With physical evidence of his great love. Oh, God's love is mirrored in nature. Come on, let's go on to the fourth one here. God's love is personal and intimate. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 43 and 1. But now, oh Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. <laughs> oh Israel. The one who formed you says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. Uh, I have called you by your name. Wait a minute. You are mine. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, how the scripture of God's love brings such comfort. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes when the enemy is trying to bring fear and anxiety, you just need to just speak out of your mouth and say, I belong to God. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. Hallelujah. He knows you. And he knows each member of your home. He knows everybody in your family. Oh, glory to God. God's love is so wonderful. God's love is so great. Oh, I tell you, I'm talking about God's love. And it just brings tears into my eyes. Mm, how he knows us by name. And when you realize that, regardless of what's going on, regardless to the attack that's taking place upon maybe those that you love or on your job, or innocent, when you think about how much God loves you, glory to God, mm, it'll bring you comfort. Oh, yes, it will. Oh, yes, it will. Not sometimes. Every time it'll do it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And God loves us. And, and, and not only does God love you, and because you're his creation, but he loves us on a corporate level as well. Oh, you hear what I said? He knows every last one in your family. He's concerned about every last one. Children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, everything you have. And then, you know, I don't have any. Some of y'all got dogs that you love. I just read it up there that God loves you. And God, you can see how he's mirrored his love through you and animals. It is true. That, that was in the world. Oh, glory to God. And when you, when you realize that God's love is personal and intimate, he's concerned about you. He's concerned about members of your family. He's concerned about everything that you're concerned about. So intimate, so personal. You, glory to God. You realize that your life has a great value to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, mm. and he calls you his own. God is so good. He's such a good God. His love is so personal and it's so intimate. Let's move on. Number five, God's love brings confident hope. Psalms 31 and 7. It says, I will be glad and rejoice in your unfailing love. For you have seen my troubles and you care about the anguish of my soul. Ooh, isn't that good? Ooh, God's love brings confident hope. Oh, glory to God. You know, God's love gives you hope in times when you, uh, when you know it just seems like, oh God, this is an impossible situation because, but I know because you never fail because you are God of the impossibility. Everything that is impossible with man is possible with God. As you begin to say, you know, God's love, it brings you confident. And you begin to hope again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. At all the times when you know, no matter what's going on, that he hears you. No matter what's going on, that he cares for you. 
Oh, hear me tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Not only that, he will be with you whenever you pass, come on, through the waters. And when you go through the rivers, he won't let them overflow you. Neither when you go through the fire, you shall not be burned. My God, my God. Uh, it doesn't matter how deep the waters may be. God lets you know he cares and that he's with you. Oh, God's love brings confident hope. A hope for tomorrow, a hope for better things, a hope for victory, a hope for great things. It's his love that gives you strength and causes you to rejoice. Mm, hallelujah. When you're going through your difficult circumstances, no matter what they may be, it makes such a difference to know that someone, oh, especially God, cares. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. Number six, let's go on. I told you each one of these is a message within themselves. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Whew. All right. Number six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God's love is sh a shield around the, un around the godly. Psalms 5 and 12. God's love is a shield around the godly. Psalms 5 and 12 says, for you bless the godly, oh Lord. You surround them with your shield of love. Think about a shield. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, you know, um, God's love is, oh, how can I put it? Oh, is a force field. Everybody can't see it. Nope, 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 nope. Mm -mm. You don't see it, but you know it's there. Mmm. God's love is a shield around the godly. It's a force field. It's one you can't see all the time. Glory to God. But when you follow him, let me tell you, his shield, he will lead you. He will guide you. Oh, yes, he'll be a shield all around you. He will protect you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and it also allows you to know, I love this. He promises that everything that he allows to come into your life must first pass. Lord have mercy. Come on here with me. Through that shield. Oh, oh, oh glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It is 100% pure love. Mm, mm, mm. So whatever God allows, God has a plan behind it. If God allows it, you allow it. Come on here, because God got a plan. He's not going to let anything. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hurt you. God's love is a shield around you. Everything he allows got to first pass. Oh, glory to God. Through that shield of God's love. Oh, I tell you, if you haven't experienced it, you just keep walking with God. You will. Because there'll be some things, hallelujah, glory to God, that you'll feel the hand of God just leading and guiding you as you go through those deep waters. Glory to God. You'll feel the hand of God, that God's hand will be there all around the godly. Even in those times, come on here, that you feel yourself. David said, I almost slipped. So that means trouble was all around. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But because of that, if that shield of God, love all around. Whatever God allows you to go through has already passed through. That God said, okay, just like he did with Job. All right. He did it with Job. All right. You go on. But I'm going to tell you right now, don't you touch his life. And that's the way it is with you. God lets the enemy know, don't you touch. Uh-uh. Touch not my anointed. Do him no harm. <laughs> God is allowing something because he's going to use that to build you. going to use that to begin to establish you. Yeah. He's going to use that to bring to pass his purpose, his will, his plan. It's all in it. It's all in it. Just before blessing comes adversity. All in it. What? But whatever God allows, it had to pass through. Oh, oh, his shield of love. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. That force field. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number seven. Let's keep moving through this. This is love month. I'm telling you, I am just so happy that I have the love of God and God loves me and God loves you. Oh, and when you begin to understand the vast, immense, oh, love of God. Oh, take it to a whole new perspective concerning everything down here on this earth. You're trusting. 
like never before. Number seven, God's love. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> oh, glory to God. See, I, I just felt this. No matter what your situation, you got to know that God created that situation. He allowed it to be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And whatever you're going through, God said, I created the, the smith that bloweth the coals against the fire. But no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment shall be condemned. For this is your heritage as a servant of the Lord. And your righteousness is of him, saith the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, you know, when you get through, you know the enemy did it. But God allowed it. God did not create it, but he allowed it. Glory to God. And as he does it, his shield of love is all about you in order to strengthen you and encourage you to do what? Draw closer to him. When you come out of that situation, you're going to be closer to God because you're going to see his hand at work. That in the midst of defeat, God gives victory. I can move on now. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Number seven, God's love allows us to thrive and be our truest Sales. Psalms 52 and 8. It says, But I am like an olive tree, thriving in the house of God. I will always trust in God's unfailing love. You know, whenever you go into the old country, a lot of, well, they have some, some trees here. In the United States that they have in buildings, architecturally, they've done that. But when you go into the old country, you'll see a lot of otter trees that they did not cut them down. They built around them, made them part of the, of the aesthetics of that building. And so this is where, as David was writing here, he said, I'm like an olive tree thriving in the house of God. I will always trust in God's unfailing love. <laughs> you know... When you know that you're loved completely by one who created you, when you know that he can completely, he created you, uh -huh, he made you, he knows all about you, it, it's freeing. Glory to God. It frees you from others' expectations. It frees you from others' demands. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They may not understand, but it frees you from their expectations, their demands. You know oh, that God Oh, glory to God, allows you to thrive and to be your true self. God is good. You know, when you know that, when you know that, that you're completely loved by the one who created you, let me tell you right now, you're going to feel such a freedom down on the inside. It doesn't matter what somebody else expects. It does not matter what others try to demand of you. You are so free in God, Okay. That, that you're going to prosper, you're going to thrive, you're going to be your true self. You're just going to be, a lot of people talk about being 100. This is being 100 right here. Glory to God. When you allow the love of God mm, whew, on the inside of you to be your true self, mm -hmm, to be real, according to his word. Glory to God. Just thrive, thrive. Oh, glory to God. Because you're trusting in God's unfailing Love. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You only need to look to God for purpose. That's the only place you need to look to. You All you need to do is look to God for trust. Trust in Him. Glory to God. He's your source of self-worth. Nobody else. God. Mm. Don't forget we set the standard. <laughs> Woo. Mm. And then as you begin to fully lean upon the will of God for your life, you'll start thriving. You'll begin to thrive, glory to God, through every situation. Mm -hmm. Number eight, let's move on. Oh, whole message in this. I have to keep moving. Hallelujah. We can never be separated from God's love. Romans 8, 38 and 39. It says, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Mm, isn't that good? Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. 
Paul was awesome. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. See, once you allow God to reveal his love, it has to be revealed to you it, because you can't understand it from a human perspective. God has to reveal to you his love for you because things down here from the human perspective will, as I used to have a mother would say, go ziggity boom on you. But God will be that sustaining force, that force field. Glory to God, that shield of love. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. That will be unfailing in your life because he loves you. Because he loves you. He'll always bring you out with victory. That's what thriving is. He always brings you out in victory. You may go through something. Oh, glory. But he'll bring you out of it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Every time. God is a good God. So nothing can taste, take God's love away from you or me. Nothing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You may experience some great trials in this life, but oh, oh, Jesus, glory to God. What a blessed assurance it is to know that God's unending love will always walk right beside you. <laughs> oh, through them all, every last one of them, God will walk with you. And thereby you can fearlessly and confidently Walk through the valley and the shadow of death and fear no evil. Why? Because God is with us. <laughs> God is with you. Ooh, God is with you. Mm, glory to God. Mm. Oh, Psalms 23 verse 4 concurs that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God is so good. Number nine. Huh? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Experiencing Christ's love empowers us to become the fullest, best versions of ourselves. Ephesians 3, 19 and 20. It says, May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully, Lord have mercy, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. That was a translation there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you know what? Ephesians 3, 19 and 20. I, I love it. I was just studying on it last week. And it talks about when you're filled with the fullness of God. As you see, when you get filled up with the fullness of God's love for you, then it says in the 20th verse, now unto him who is able. You see, God will do such great and mighty things. Glory to God in your life. See, it says, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life. I like that. I like that. And power that comes from God. It's one of my favorite verses. Yes, it is on love and because it promises that in this life, you'll never um, really be able to fully comprehend God's love. Glory to God. You can only be blessed to experience it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And it, it's just a blessing to experience the love of God. It, it is such a blessing because God's love, I tell you, is there for us. And you know what? Here's a thought that's even more wonderful. Simply experiencing Christ's love allows you to be made complete, and to experience the full life that you're after, that, that, that you're seeking after, okay? Everything, the full life that we're all wanting, the fullness from God, amen? Because God's love heals, God's love restores, God's love empowers us to be all that God created us to be. Isn't that a blessing when you think about that? How he heals, he restores, he empowers to be everything that he created. Nobody else can be you but you. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. On number 10, praise the Lord. God's authentic love compels us to pour out 
unconditional love to a lost and hurting world. 1 John 4, verses 11 and 12. And it says, Glory to God, hallelujah. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. I'm in 1 John 4, verse 11 and 12. Okay, dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us. And his love is brought to full expression in us. Whoa, glory to God, hallelujah. Even though God's gift is it's free and can never be earned, but when you begin to experience God's great love, it, oh, it's so vast, it's so immense, hallelujah. You know, God begins to task you with loving others. Yes, he begins to give you an assignment that you love others in the same manner that he loves you. God's authentic love compels us to pour out unconditional love to a lost and hurting world. Oh, God's love. It comes, it comes um, mm, to full expression when you begin to walk in unconditional love toward others. You see, because God loves us. It comes to a full expression through you, through me, as we love others. It is an assignment from God. And what an humbling privilege that God has given unto us that we begin to play a part in communicating God's love. Oh, what, what a privilege to others. Glory to God. His life-changing love to a lost world. What a privilege. And that's why we should always model. We should always uh, multiply. We should always mentor. Oh, yeah, we should always be in that position that we are continuing to show the love of God to others in this world. God is so good. People are hurting, especially in this hour that we're in. So much hurt everywhere. It's hurt all the time. Whether there's a pandemic going on, whether there are disasters in the world, that is always hurt going on in the world, that someone needs you to share the love of God with them, a love that heals, a love that empowers. Oh, yes, a, a, a love that will sustain them. Someone needs uh, to hear that from you, that they can be restored. Oh, God has compelled us to pour out unconditional love to a lost and hurting world. Oh, what an humbling experience. I thank God. Hallelujah. And I, I just, this is why every day I just dig deep into his word because it forever unfolds. I, I've read the Bible many times, but let me tell you, his mercies are new every morning. When I read his word, it's so fresh. There is, there's a revelation. There is an inspiration. There is information that God gives me that I begin to move into, that he opens it up. He gives me a new perspective and it's all because of his love. Oh, glory to God. Oh, and it just makes you want to dig deeper when you begin to walk in the love of God <laughs> into the awesome verses in the Bible. Because there's more. I just gave you 10 tonight. But there's more glory to God. Hallelujah. That will teach you how to apply, how to understand the love of God. That's why we read the Bible. You should read your Bible. That should be a verse that you're meditating on. You know, you, uh, listen, when I say that, I'm saying to you, there should be a verse in God's Bible that you're thinking on doing today, Do, yeah, doing the day. Yeah. If you begin to make a scripture, a theme for thought, you know, throughout the day, you just, you're meditating on that. And that just simply means, now wait, now let's not get kooky, crazy, and flaky. I am talking about, see, when you be, when I say meditate, that means you're pondering. That means you're thinking about it. All right. You're thinking about it and uh, you got it on your mind. The Bible lets us know in Proverbs 23 and 7, you know, it says that um, what a man thinks about uh, most will come to pass in his life. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That's what it's saying. It's saying what you choose to think about and what you choose to dwell on will eventually 
take place in your life. So if you begin to get a Bible scripture and you begin to use that, I'm telling you, it'll bring clarity. It'll bring, bring um, conviction. It'll bring you into a place, oh my God, that you'll see the greatness of God as never before. And, and reading that word and getting it down in your heart through consecration, great and mighty things will happen because you'll find out God so loved the world that he gave mm -hmm, his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him would not have to perish, but have everlasting life. God is so good. Ha! Oh, glory to God. It won't take but a few minutes a day, just a few minutes a day, and it will blow your mind what God will do. Well, we went through them all, didn't we? Every last one. <laughs> I just enjoyed sharing it with you on tonight because as you begin to see what God's love will do in your life, it will do great and mighty things. I, I'm just excited about what God's love does. I'm excited about how God's love begin to move in the life. So let's go over those 10 tonight. I want to just go back through them. I, I just I just sense uh, just uh, how empowering it is. Number one, God's love sets the standard. Okay. Number two, God demonstrates unconditional true love through Jesus' sacrifice. Oh, do you want those verses? Okay, number one is 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. Number two is Romans 5 and 8. Okay, number three, God's love is mirrored in nature. Okay, they're putting them up on the screen right now. Going back through them for you right now. Number four, God's love is personal and intimate isaiah 43 and one good 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 for you good 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 number five. Oh yes this is blessing you god's love brings confident hope there's the scripture there number six. Oh, this is so good i love this god's love is a shield around the godly <laughs> Number seven, God's love allows us to thrive and be our truest selves. Isn't that good? It, I mean, this is good. So practical. Oh, but humbling, huh? Number eight, we can never be separated from God's love. Oh, I have to say Salah behind that. Now pause and think about that. Number nine, experiencing crisis love empowers us to become the fullest, best versions of ourselves. Isn't that good? Talk about being 100. There it is right there. <laughs> and the verse for it. Okay, number 10. God's authentic love compels us to pour out unconditional love to a lost and hurting world. Mmm. Just 10. That's not all, but that's 10. If you just will begin to dig into those verses right there, it will cause a peace to come down in your soul. You just begin to dig in those verses and see the vast, the immense, unchangeable, oh, word of God on love. You will see God do something so great in your life that it will bring wholeness, It'll bring joy. It'll bring peace. Oh, yes. It'll cause your perspective to get in alignment with God's path for your life. Oh, I know what I'm talking about today. Glory to God. All because you are loved and you know it by God. <laughs> oh, come on. Let's praise God. Come on. Give God some glory for his love. Come on. Come on. There's a deep understanding tonight. Oh, just from those 10 verses. Now dig deeper. <laughs> Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him for his love that you can be your truest self. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, and thrive. Oh, God is so good. Oh, I love him, don't you? I love the Lord. I truly do. I truly do. God is so good. He's worthy to be praised. Oh, glory. God's love. Well, it's time to give. It is offering time, not out of compulsion, nor out of...